myth. You can get a good deal on a new car. <laughs> Truth, a new car loses 70% of its value in the first four years, according to finalcall.com. Kiplinger's Personal Finance Magazine verifies it with very, very similar numbers. Now, let me kind of tell you what that means. If you buy a $28,000 car, in four years, it's going to be worth $8,400 on average. That's the average in America today. That's $408 a month that you are losing. So if you're driving a brand new $28,000 car once a week on your way to work, roll down the window, throw out one of these on the interstate just to kind of get the effect of what's going on. Well, now you just don't believe in having anything nice. I believe in having a lot of stuff nice. I just don't want that nice stuff to have me. I'm not one of those financial guys that says you ought to live in a cave, collect lint, and only come out on Triple Coupon Thursday. <laughs> I want you to get some nice things. But when you pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars a month, every month through your whole life in car payments, it is very difficult to build wealth. The car payment financially, mathematically, is the mantra of the middle class. You are dooming yourself to financial mediocrity if you keep car payments as a way of life. Get the stupid thing paid off and then do what rich people do, and that's pay cash. Think. Think. It's the largest thing we buy that goes down in value. And the Consumer Bankers Association reports that 33.5% of car buyers owe more on their trade-in than it's worth. That's one-third of the people driving around out there when they hit a car lot. One out of three are upside down. They owe more on their car than it's worth. And that's the other call I get on the air all the time. Dave, how do I get out from under the upside down car? So, you know, that's the deal. There is not a, such a thing as a good deal on a new car. Ooh, that one's a tough one. Didn't hear any cheers then. <laughs> the worst car accidents happen on the showroom floor. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> now, is it ever okay to buy a brand new car? Absolutely. Absolutely. When you have a million dollars. And if you do what I teach you to do, it won't be that long. You'll be amazed how quick. And in the meantime, you can drive some nice cars. But when you got a million dollars, you can afford to lose 10 or 15 or 20,000 bucks on something and enjoy that. You know, I got a friend of mine that's worth $20 million. He called me up the other day and he said, Dave, I'm thinking about buying my wife a brand new $70,000 Lexus for Christmas for her present. What do you think? And I said, dude, you got $20 million. Shut up. <laughs> what are you asking me for? I mean, go get the car. Or the guy that calls me on the air one day. And, and the call screener software, when I'm on the air, the person's name pops up when, when Laura takes a call and then types in the subject of the person that's what they're calling about. And it says, you know, Ron in Birmingham, and it types in, wants to buy a Harley. Now, I mean, normally on the Dave Ramsey Show, that's a 32-year-old little boy who's behind on his student loan, his wife's scared, there's no emergency fund, they've got six payments on everything else, and he wants to go buy a Harley because he works hard. <laughs> you know? I'm sorry, I'm getting ready to kill this guy when he comes on the air. I mean, I'm just loading my gun, you know? And he comes on the air, and I'm, I'm ready to get him. I mean, I'm poised, right? And he says, yeah, Dave, I've always wanted a Harley. It's been a lifelong dream of mine to have a big Harley, one of those big road bikes, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I said, man, I got to tell you, Harleys are cool bikes. They make a neat sound. And those guys riding around on them, they all look cooler than me, you know. I mean, I like them. They're, they're neat bikes. I said, you ought to, maybe you ought to get you one. Tell me about your financial situation. I'm figuring he's going to start telling me how broke he is and how he deserves a Harley, and he's going to put it on payments, and then I'm going to kill him. So I was kind of setting him up. <laughs> I said, so, so, so how much do you make a year? And he said, well, last year I made 650000 Do what? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm a neurosurgeon. <laughs> so what'd you make the year before? Oh, 550, 560. How much money you got in mutual funds? About 10 million. Dude, buy the Harley. <laughs> so I guess we're laying out some guidelines here, aren't we? If you live like no one else, later you get to live like no one else. If you drive like no one else, later you get to drive like no one else. And you don't have to feel guilty about it because you haven't put your family in jeopardy because you wanted a toy. The guy that drove up with the, with the old vet that was so cool on my driveway, he's worth several million dollars. 
That old vet was under 10 grand. He just bought it for fun. If he drives it off a cliff tomorrow, it doesn't change his life. With no insurance. As long as he's not in it. <laughs> Financially. Doesn't change his life. You with me? I mean, this is, this is, this is how this stuff works. Enjoy your money, but don't, don't, call, don't go get stuff when you haven't got the money. That's what children do. Adults devise a plan and follow it. Children do what feels good. And I know this is hurting some of your feelings. And it, like I said, it's a gift. Myth. <laughs> Myth, I'll take out a 30-year mortgage and pay extra on it. I promise, I promise, I promise. I'll pay it like a 15. Truth is, life happens and something else will always seem more important. Never take out more, ever more than a 15-year fixed rate mortgage and never take out more than a fourth of your take-home pay in a payment. Stay away from these adjustable rates. Stay away from these balloon mortgages. Stay away from these arms. We're going to cover that in detail. But let's look at the 15 versus the 30 for a second. A 15-year mortgage on a $225,000 mortgage at 6% has a payment on a 30-year of $1,349. On a 15-year, has an $1,899 payment. That's a difference of $550. But here's what happens. When you pay 30 years of $1,349 a month, you pay for the 225 $485,000. When you pay 15 years of $1,899 a month, you pay $341,000 for that $225,000. So when you do the 15-year mortgage, you save yourself $143,874. This is a lot of money. And you save yourself 15 years in bondage because you know what I figured out? 15-year mortgages, they always pay off in 15 years or less. 30-year mortgages that I promise I'm going to pay sooner, don't always do it. As a matter of fact, most of the time they don't because stuff comes up like the transmission goes out or we got to buy a prom dress. <laughs> There's always a little bit of life happening in our budget, isn't there? And, you can, and the first thing to go is the pay an extra routine is the first thing to go in the budget. So that is a myth. Don't take out a 30 and think you're going to pay it like a 15. Myth, it's wise to take out an adjustable rate mortgage or a balloon mortgage because that's all I can qualify for. And besides that, I'm going to be moving anyway. Truth, you will be moving when they foreclose. <laughs> See, what you've got to think about is this. The adjustable rate mortgage started in the early 1980s when interest rates on fixed rate mortgages went to 17, 18, and 19 percent. I was selling real estate, started selling real estate in 1978. And we were selling real estate in the early 80s in the Jimmy Carter era, and the rates went just through the roof. And we were sitting there with 17.5 and 18 percent fixed rates. And so we started seeing these new adjustable rate mortgages, which were cheaper. They were like 1 or 2 or 3 percent even, less. And man, I mean, 15 percent looks good in an 18 percent world, doesn't it? Or, or 12 percent looks really good in, in a 16 percent world. And that's what the world we were operating in. And so we were in the real estate business. We were all like, yeah, anything to get the rate down, right? But what we started understanding and discovering over the years is this. Mortgage companies, when they do a fixed rate loan or a bank that does a fixed rate loan at, six, say, 6%, 7%, if they have several hundred million dollars that they are committed to receive only 6% on or only 7% on. And then if rates go up, in order to attract people to deposit on money markets, they may have to pay more out on savings accounts than they're receiving in on these mortgages. Banks don't like it going that way. They want to pay out less than they're receiving in. They want to pay out 2% and get 7% in, don't they? And when it goes the other way, it's called disintermediation. Well, when that happened in the 80s, it happened so big that it caused the savings and loan industry to fail. You thought it was fraud, and you thought it was all the news stories and everything that came out. The actual statistics were that 12.5% of the SNLs that failed, failed due to fraud. The rest of them failed. Disintermediation got them because their money markets were at 12%, and they had hundreds of millions of dollars of loans laying down in here from the early 70s at 5%, 6 7 8%, and they got upside down on their own deal. Well, the adjustable rate came out so that the next time these rates go up, that a, at least a bunch of their mortgages will go up as the rates go up. So the adjustable rate mortgage is not here for you. The adjustable rate mortgage is here to keep the bank from losing money in an increasing interest rate environment. 
It transfers the risk of higher interest rates to you. That's what it's for. So why do we do the 30-year mortgage? Why do we do the adjustable rate mortgage? Why do we do all of these things? Well, we've, why, why don't we, if we have a 30-year mortgage, why do we have a 30-year mortgage? Why don't we have a 42-year mortgage? Why don't we have a 27-year mortgage? Where'd 30 come from? What's the magic number? Nobody seems to know. I've researched it for years. It, you know, the 40-year mortgage, is, everybody talks about it, but it never really happens. 20-year mortgages talk about it, but it never happens. 15s have become popular as rates have come down, and people like me, consumer advocates, have pushed them. But the 30-year mortgage is still the standard in the business, isn't it? The adjustable rate mortgage is still the standard in the business. Why is it that it's that way? Why do we go that way all the time with our mentality? Nobody seems to know. It's kind of like the story Zig Ziglar tells. One time when he was selling, he won a sales contest, and the prize for winning the sales contest was a, was a, a prize country ham. Now, Zig is from Mississippi, and a prize country ham is about as good as it gets. He and I have been become friends, and, and i got to tell you, he, he loved that ham. I can promise you he did. And he came home, and he took that ham, and he took it in the kitchen, and he handed it to his wife, Jean, and, and she immediately cut the end off of it and put it in a pan and began to bake it. This is a story he tells in his seminars all the time. And, and, and he said, why did you cut the end off my prize ham? And she said, well, that's how you bake them. He said, no, it's not. You bake the whole thing. She said, well, no, you cut the end off. That's what my mama always did. And he said, well, why did your mama do it? Well, I don't know. Let's call mama and ask her. So they call mama and ask her. Mama, why do we cut the end off the ham? Well, I don't know. My mama always did it. Well, let's get her on a conference call. So they get Grant Granny on a conference call. They're all sitting there. Granny, I cut the end off the ham. Zig says I shouldn't have done that. Mom says she always did it because you always did it. I always did it because she always did it. Nobody knows why we do this. Why did you cut the end off the ham? She said, well, I don't know why you two are doing it, but my pan was too short. <laughs> So why we take out a 30-year mortgage? We don't know. Somebody one time decided it was a good idea, and I suspect it was a banker. <laughs> Something to think about. So I'll take out an adjustable rate mortgage or a balloon? No, I don't think so. I think instead we will get rid of that particular myth.